So, um, first of all, welcome to CIEE Global Navigator Program, and specifically our new program, which is called High School Away. In High School Away, we create bubbles, and I'm so happy that we are going to create a bubble in the jungle. So it's going to be a COVID-free bubble that makes it safe and fun for you guys to continue with your schooling and um, have an intercultural experience at the same time. So the bubble that you're going to join is, as I said, in Costa Rica, Monteverde, Costa Rica. You might know the name Monteverde because it is the name of a very uh, famous uh, cloud forest preserve, the Monteverde Cloud Forest Reserve. And this is one of the wonders of the world. And if, um, if you come and visit me for this program, I think we'll get a chance to visit the Cloud Forest, um, the Cloud Forest Reserve, and we'll certainly be able to explore the Cloud Forest around us on our campus. Our campus is located in North Central Costa Rica, where the smiley face is. This is our CIE Global Institute at Monteverde, Costa Rica. This is located in the San Luis Valley, which is shown here um, on the left. What you're looking down upon here is the town of San Luis and the foothills of the Monteverde Cloud Forest Reserve. San Luis is located about seven or eight kilometers from the town of Monteverde, about 12 kilometers from the town of Santa Elena. And what that translates into is about a 20 minute car ride from the nearest town and about a 45 to 60 minute hike, all uphill if you're going towards Monteverde and Santa Elena, and pretty much all downhill if you're going from there down into the valley. Hey, Karen, I think we have someone waiting oh. in, the, in the lobby, if you don't mind letting her in. Her name is oh, Ava. Okay, let's see. I may have to stop oh, sharing. Me. Just give me one second here. Or so just make me the host so I can do that. Sorry, everyone. I think that's fine. We're good. Can you see my um, screen? All set. Okay, so I hope you're seeing the campus. Can you guys see um, photographs of a campus and a map? Coming up. Coming up. Yes, yes, we could. Oh. <laughs> All right. Let's try this again. So, um, what you're looking at is an overview of our campus nestled in the San Luis Valley. And the inset, which is the map, should give you an indication sort of of the scale and the complexity of this campus. You could think of this as an all-inclusive campus that has all of the usual kinds of campus facilities, such as dormitories and classrooms and dining hall, library, um, that sort of thing. But in addition, it also has a forest reserve, it has farms, it has a botanic garden, and it has lots of uh, forest trails uh, for uh, hiking and so on. Let's um, take a closer look at the facilities and the grounds. I'm gonna actually start by showing some of the infrastructure in terms of the buildings and that sort of thing um, to give you a sense of uh, the immediate environment, particularly of central campus, okay? And then I'm gonna take you for a longer tour around the farm and the forest. So the main campus includes the student union. The student union is comprised of the dining hall, the kitchen, a reception area. This is a hangout area um, for students and staff alike. It's where student life it has its offices, but in addition, in the student union, you'll find the library which is um, equipped with good Wi-Fi. This is true across campus. But we also have some instruments and there's a defined period during the evening hours when um, we allow music making on campus. Our classrooms number to six, we have four spacious large classrooms and then we also have two cozy classrooms. These will be available for your use. You can do your studies in there. You can take your uh, remote learning classes online there. You can meet with the um, study support 
or with your RAs for um, study sessions, if you like. Your housing uh, consists of rooms, which are located in bungalows and cabinas, cabins, uh, most likely with a small group that is fewer than 16, which is what we expect. We will house you in the bungalows. The bungalows um, are comprised each of four rooms. Um, and so we have four bungalows, so that totals to 16 rooms. Our intention right now is for everyone to have their own private room. A private room is large because it usually houses four students and it has its own ensuite bathroom. So you'll be in um, uh, um, by yourself, uh, 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 you'll be a single in a room with four beds in your own private bath plus desks and storage space. And um, the bungalows are ringed by a porch with a um, fabulous view. They have solar powered hot water heaters and um, fabulous windows so you can get um, the early morning sunshine to wake you up. We have lots of recreational spaces, both indoor and outdoor. We have a soccer field. We have a re recreational room, a rec room adjacent to the rec room. We have a basketball hoop and a volleyball court. The rec room has a large fireplace and um, almost always in the rainy season, which it is, we'll have, um, we'll have the guards light a fire to keep it cozy and warm. This rec room also doubles as a multi-purpose room for lots of other kinds of activities, including dance classes, um, exercise classes, yoga, that sort of thing. But the outdoor spaces are also pretty phenomenal. We have a very large forest and we're adjacent to the Monteverde Cloud Forest Reserve and the Children's Eternal Rainforest, which means we get to share a lot of wildlife with our neighbors. That also means that we have some really amazing trails that take you into cloud forest um, around fig trees and uh, through really colorful patches of habitat filled with monkeys and agoutis and toucans and toucanats. So we'll arrange morning activities that will include wildlife viewing, especially birding, but we'll also arrange some evening activities like night hikes so you can see the creatures that come out after dark, like the frogs and other animals. Of course, we also have a tree nursery where we're raising hundreds of native trees, which are used in our reforestation projects. We are helping with climate change mitigation around the Belver Biological Corridor where Monteverde is situated. This year, I'm happy to say that we have raised and uh, distributed over 1,800 trees around to our neighbors and to nearby organizations to help with conservation efforts. Um, if you're interested, we'd like to invite you to help us in this very important effort in um, climate mitigation. We also have a vegetable garden. We make very special kinds of compost. Um, we also have a, an organic coffee plantation. And this year, starting in about November, December, we will harvest our first crop of coffee beans. Um, and so if you stick around until then, you'll get a chance to help us harvest them. You'll at least see them producing the fruit right now. They just aren't quite ready for picking. But perhaps what really catches your attention um, is our livestock. Um, we have a farm, an animal farm, that includes pigs and chickens and uh, cattle, dairy cattle. We also have tilapia, that's not in the picture here, but we do have um, tilapia ponds. And this is an, this is, these animal farms are part of an integrated farm system in which we harvest food, we send our food waste to our pigs, they give us their pig poop, for which we are thankful, because it goes into our biodigester, which then produces 
biofuels used in our kitchen to cook our meals. Um, and those meals are often made up of products that we derive from our own garden. Um, but I wanna really talk to you about something kind of exciting that happened today. So look at this. This is our newest addition to the CIE Monteverdi family. Bebe, a new baby cow, was born this morning. Can you believe it? Just this morning, I'm so glad that it happened in time for us to get photographs for you. If you do come, you're gonna to get to see this baby start to grow up, get stronger every day. Today, the legs are pretty wobbly. Tomorrow, they'll be a little stronger and so on. Isn't that nice? Okay, I wanna say a couple words about the program High School Away. So on this program, we're inviting students who are really serious students they have good records and they've shown a lot of motivation and initiative and they want to study away because maybe they're bored in their hometown, maybe they're taking classes remotely anyway, and maybe they want to get a little intercultural education um, during these difficult times. And I don't blame you. So I want to make it possible for you to do that. So we're gonna set up a bubble that's safe for you. The bubble will be your Costa Rican family. Who's your Costa Rican family? Well, it'll consist of the other students on your program, but it will also include the resident assistants who are here, yes, to chaperone you, but also to be nearby in case you need some help um, on an hour to hour basis. They're available 24 seven. You'll also have some academic support in the form of individuals who are Costa Ricans, who are either in college now or have college degrees, and they're familiar with high school core subjects, okay? And the other part of your Costa Rican family will be the kitchen staff. The resident assistants, the teaching support, and the kitchen staff will live on campus with you and you'll all be part of one bubble. And this will be a safe bubble for you to interact with and to be a little bit freer with, okay? So your housing will be, as I mentioned before, private rooms with your own ensuite bathroom. We supply towels, sheets, blankets, the usual. You will take three meals a day in a common dining hall You'll have access to the spaces that I mentioned, both indoor and outdoor, and we'll provide once a week laundry services for your clothing and for your bedding. In addition, you're gonna have 24 seven Wi-Fi access, and you'll have access to a printer should you need it. Our campus has excellent Wi-Fi, and we have electricity that is backed up by our own generators, okay? I'm gonna confess I'm at my home right now and I don't have the great internet or electricity that we have on campus. Um, and so sometimes I go down there just for the benefit of good Wi-Fi. Um, but you're gonna have it 24-7 um, in your rooms, in the library, and so on. The kinds of support that you can expect will be live-in resident advisors who will help you you know, in all aspects of student life. Um, and you'll also have academic support. Um, this support is, as I mentioned, for academic, and it's gonna be available for seven hours out of the day on a predefined um, schedule that allows you guys um, ample uh, opportunity to get your, your questions answered. Basically, you should consider this academic support to be facilitation, facilitation for learning. You should not think of these as teachers. They are not certified instructors, okay? They're not necessarily people with an education degree. They're people who are bright, who have been through college, who are familiar with the core topics, and who have computer smarts and savvy, 
and can help direct you to the resources that you need. Quite possibly resources that are made available by your own home institution, but you might need some pointers or a little bit of help to locate them, okay? So the schedule on the whole looks like this. It's a four week program. During the first two weeks, you'll be somewhat quarantined. You'll come in to the bubble. You'll be able to interact with your bubble friends. So those are the other students, the RAs, the teaching support, and the kitchen support, okay? You'll be able to interact with them. That means you'll be able to play soccer with them. You'll be able to hike with them. You'll be able to do farm activities with them, dance lessons, cooking lessons with them, practice your Spanish with them, okay? We will be monitoring you carefully and you will be monitoring you carefully, okay? And as I expect, um, things will go very smoothly. And by the end of two weeks, we're gonna allow some off-campus excursions to take place, okay? And this means that you'll venture off of the campus and into the Monteverde community. You may go to the Monteverde Cloud Forest Reserve. You might go to other reserves. You may visit the town, all supervised by CIE staff, the resident assistants, okay? All organized, all coordinated and supervised. You won't be allowed to go off campus except under those conditions. And under those conditions, you will be interacting potentially with people outside of your bubble and you will be taking measures to stay safe. You'll be using best practices that you always use whenever you're around someone outside of your bubble. Remember, that includes using a mask. That includes staying at least six feet away. It also includes washing your hands frequently, okay? So those are the behaviors that you're gonna have to implement when you're not just in your bubble. Okay, on a day by day, your schedule will partially be determined by your own classroom schedule. Many of you will probably have live classes in addition to independent learning, okay? You're gonna have to budget your time, manage your uh, live classes, manage your attendance, and you're gonna have to um, select the hours of the day where you perform best to get your work done. You'll be told the hours during the day when assistance is available and we're gonna encourage you to make use of those hours. And we're gonna make sure that there are activities available every day in the morning and in the afternoon. Morning activities could include farm chores, they could include um, hikes, they could include bird watching. Afternoon activities could include different kinds of farm chores different kinds of outdoor activities. Those of you who are coming from California might be on a schedule that's a little bit later, and so you might wanna take advantage of morning activities. Those of you coming from the East Coast might have a somewhat earlier schedule of live classes. So maybe the afternoon classes, uh, activities would be better. There'll be evening activities as well. All of these activities will be low key because the focus will be on making sure that the conditions are good for you to get your studies done first and foremost. But we think it's really important that you do things on the campus and with members of your cohort. On the weekends, we'll take longer, we'll do longer activities and longer excursions on the campus until week three and week four. There'll be service opportunities in the form of volunteer work that you can engage in if you're interested. All of these activities that I mentioned are optional, but remember, that's really why you're coming, you know? And so they're optional, but why would you miss them? So think about that. Are you ready? Well, you and your parents are gonna have to look carefully 
at the eligibility requirements that we've established, plus the requirements that are established by the Costa Rican government for entry into Costa Rica. Let me review these with you really quickly, but I don't want to belabor them because I think that you've probably been studying them pretty carefully anyway. Remember that for US participants, there's a certain GPA minimum. We're opening this to Costa Rican participants. Um, they also have a certain, essentially a GPA requirement for all of their classes. We also want proof for all of you, for US and Costa Rican participants, that you're self-motivated, that you're self-actualizing, that you're comfortable being in the tropics, that the idea of cozying up to bugs and butterflies and monkeys is exciting, not too scary, maybe just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit scary, just enough to get the adrenaline, and then you realize how absolutely cool it is. The requirements for entry into Costa Rica, there's a website, that I think you're all familiar with, but I'm gonna review these very briefly with you. Um, visitors from select states are, are allowed to enter Costa Rica. The states are changing daily. You should be checking on this website daily if you're wondering if your state has been recently added to the list. So for instance, today, two states were added to the list. The states of California and Ohio will be admitted as of October 1st. Plenty of time to get here for our program, okay? In addition, you need to have a negative COVID test within 72 hours of departure. No ifs, ands, ors about it. You simply will not be allowed to board without that. You will also need a state-issued ID, or for those of you who are 18 and have a driver's license, you can use that. They must be from a permitted state. There's an immunological form that you'll have to fill out, and you'll have to show proof of travel insurance. Your INEX insurance, which is part of um, your package as a CIE participant, uh, covers that, supplies that proof, and um, I'll, I can work with you to show you which specific sentences constitute proof that you have what you need to fulfill that requirement, okay? So again, I mentioned a website, I think you're aware of it. This is um, the website here, please be um, attentive to it. I also wanted to cover a couple of, I just wanted to make a couple of comments about a packing list, it's, I think, premature and too detailed to enter a conversation right now about what the specifics are for, your, for what you should pack. That information will be forthcoming in a written document, okay? So please, let's not go into the details too much. What you can look forward to is written information that will cover this. It will give you information and suggestions on the personal protective gear and the articles that you should pack for your health, safety, and security. It will tell you more about what is appropriate clothing for the weather conditions, rainy season, and for the indoor-outdoor lifestyle that you will have on this campus. It will make suggestions about school supplies to pack, and it will give a list of carry-on essentials that you'll wanna have in your carry-on when you board the plane.